Well, welcome back, everyone. Another edition of the Ferrario Faceoff here on Claves Online. I'm Alex Ferrario, of course, pre and post game host for the St. Louis Blues on 101 ESPN. And of course, I'm with my good buddy, Mike Claiborne, as always, to talk a little blues hockey because Claves for me, and I know this is the same for you, this is like Christmas Day, my birth, <clears throat> excuse me, my birthday, Thanksgiving. I'll even throw maybe my <laughs> wedding day into this for how excited it is when hockey comes back. And you also have the birth of a child we'll throw in there as well. Probably and you're right. right. You're right. Uh, we've been waiting four months for this, and it's the first of the long road back as far as I'm concerned. And while I know that uh, it was just practice, uh, and I'm reading tweets from people who are making it seem like we're one game away from game <laughs> seven, uh, I always say let's take a deep breath because – Everybody who's on this team wasn't on the ice at the same time today. And I'm looking at some of the line combinations and I'm saying, well, wait a minute. You know, you, you see neighbors and a couple of other kids that are out there. Right. OK, so what they want to do is just give them a feel, let them think about it, come back a day or two from now and work on little things because they're not going to be on this team. Right. This year. So what I think we have to do, and I'll ask you this. Is this going to be a different training camp than what we, we've been accustomed to? Because, A, you only have 10 days. B, you've been off for four months. C, you don't have a lot of changes. you got a couple. you got a big one on the blue line, and you got one up front. But you have that third and fourth line competition that we always like to see because those guys are going to be uh, difference makers in the third period in some cases. So tell me what you saw today and what you thought about. Yeah, you know, looking at it, you know, of course, I'm like you, Clips. You see the line combinations, you're going, oh, boy, Braden Shen's playing on a left wing. Maybe we should remember this. But, of course, this is day one, and we all know how Craig Berube works, right? Like, if he doesn't like something, he's going to switch it. So I think at least from what I took away from training camp today, Claves, is this was more about like if it, this is kind of like the second or third week of a normal training camp. Because if hockey fans re recall, when training camp started a normal season, that first week is like, what, 60 to 75 guys on the camp roster. A bunch of guys that you're probably not going to see at the NHL this year, next year, or the year after. Maybe but, not even in Brentwood. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You might not even see them again. Yeah. But this is the shot for the coaching staff to say, okay, NHL guy, AHL guy, not ready to be here. And they sort it out. Right now, you know, everyone that's on this camp is, is looked at as an NHL player. I think Jake Neighbors is an exception because Jake Neighbors is a guy that they just drafted. They want to get into the system as quick as possible. I don't believe he could play at the AHL this season. So you get him acclimated a lot before he goes back to junior hockey. But everyone else, I mean, you're looking at guys like Austin Pogansky. You're looking at guys like a Hugh McGing, a Mitch Rinke, a Jake Wallman. These are all guys that, at least for me, the Blues view as somebody who could contribute to this team if they needed. And I'll tell you this, Klaibs, the one thing when I talked with Craig Berube a couple of days ago that he said is going to be the most important thing for this season is going to be depth and bodies. And I think that's what this camp is, finding out. Who's our bodies that we can utilize if injuries pile up? Because you're playing a game basically every other night. You got to have bodies ready to go. Well, let, let's let's throw COVID into the equation. Yeah, While we want it to be a perfect world where uh, you know we can go through a whole season like we did without having any infections. I don't see that happening. I and agree. you might lose two or three players at one time. And with the protocol being what seven to ten days. You have to find out who can play and who can play on a regular basis. Like you just said, you're going to play a lot of games in a short period of time. So you need to find out some guys who can be quick learners in order to be able to contribute and, and not just eat up minutes. You, you're going to have to ask some guys that have to actually go out and kill a penalty, maybe score a goal or two, uh, check somebody. You know, So you're going to have to find some full service people. And the sooner you find out who they are, the better off you're going to be. Yeah, I mean, think about it, Claves. If you miss a week as an NHL player, you're missing at least four games. So, I mean, yeah. four games in a 56-game season, that could make or break you in the postseason. So you have to have somebody that, let's say, hypothetically, you lose a Oscar Sundquist for a week because of COVID. Well, you got to have somebody who can play that role. Penalty kill, five-on-five, fourth-line minutes, a heavy-style hockey – 
So I think that's what you're seeing in this training camp. And what you will see this week is who can stay at this Craig Berube competitive level that he needs for once the season starts up. So a couple of other things I wanted to bring up to you, Claves, that I noticed at camp today, the defensive pairings. So many people, and, and, and I put this out there as a general statement, but I've heard a lot of Blues fans concerned about the defense this season because you've lost Alex Petrangelo. There's no Jay Bowmeister. You have a different looking team. But the more I look about it and the more I watch them on the ice, Claves, you have the perfect mix, I think, for a defensive unit. You have three guys that are six foot six or above in Bortuzzo, Scandella, and Pareco. These are big, heavy guys. But you also have three smaller guys that implement well into the NHL game this season Vince Dunn, Tory Krug, Justin Falk. They all can play a heavy game, but if you want to succeed in the NHL right now, Claves, you got to be fast. You got to be able to create offense out of nothing. And that's why I think the Blues are set up well with this defense rather than the concern that so many have. Yeah, that's a great point you make um, because you, you use the word heavy, and that's something that the Blues won a Stanley Cup with. But I know they're in a Western Conference where there is speed involved. And I think you can still be heavy if you're in position. Mm -hmm. And one of the things about Craig Berube that I've come to appreciate, he keeps it simple. Mm -hmm. Hey, here's where you need to be here. Here's where you need to be there. And don't be afraid to use the body to deny a puck or a pass or whatever. And I, I think he's got a good mix. And I think that's why it's going to be easier for them to adjust because he does keep it simple. And, and, you know, one of the things that I look at, Alex, these guys have all played hockey at various levels. Mm -hmm. And as long as you maintain the fundamentals of hockey, especially North American hockey, then you're going to be okay. And that's something I think we're, we're going to see at this point where you got size and position, mm -hmm. not necessarily size and speed. I mean, can a blue skate with Colorado? Can we get in a shootout with them? I don't know. But can you deny the shootout from taking place? Sure you can. And once you do that, then you frustrate a Colorado or a Vegas, and then all of a sudden they're playing your game. They're taking a bad penalty. They're out of position, you know, and those are the things that get you a goal or a power play or something along the line and gives you an advantage. So that's what I'm kind of looking forward to. Well, and that's it, Klebs. I mean, you make a great point there because think about this. This is why I feel Mike Hoffman was a necessity for the Blues because you got to compete with Colorado right now. And if you look at what Joe Sackick has done in Colorado, he's done an incredible job. Their Stanley Cup window is open now, and it's open for the next 10 years with what they have on this roster in terms of cap space, depth, and players. But if you look at what the Blues have now, I mean, Colorado added Brandon Saad. They added Devin Tays. They've added a lot of depth players. Mike Hoffman presents the Blues the opportunity to not have to solely rely on Ryan O'Reilly, David Perron, Braden Shen, and Jaden Schwartz to score goals. Now you can divvy up that talent, and when Tarasenko comes back, Clibs, that's four lines that you can roll out there at any time of the game, which is exactly what the Blues had to their advantage when they won the Stanley Cup. Yeah, and you know, those four lines could have a guy that's good for 20, 22 goals. Yeah. On each line, and they, they've never been that. Well, they were that deep in 81. Uh, they had a bunch of 20-goal scorers on that team. So here's another question for you. This is a, a, a division, and it's certainly a conference, that the physical play will be more in play. Mm -hmm. It starts in Vegas with Ryan Reeves, and you're going to see some other teams that are going to have some, some, some muscle. Kyle Clifford is going to be the designated guy for the Blues, although he comes with a pretty good resume of being a, a cup champion a couple of times. So who backs him up? Who's the guy if Clifford – God forbid, has COVID or something along that line where he's not in a position to play. What other physical presence are the Blues going to bring in a training camp to make sure they're ready in the event that we're going to get into a rut where we're going to have a guy, need a guy like that? You know, they got a couple guys I think that can fill that gap. Now, not to Kyle Clifford's level because he's been doing it for a while and doing it on a good team that was the LA Kings. Uh, Robert Bortuzzo is a guy who is not afraid to step up when he needs no. to. We've seen that before. Um, Vince Dunn, Claves, I'll go back to that last game before the pandemic hit. Yeah. It's the Blackhawks. You remember Vince Dunn dropping. Yeah. Well, that guy, was he was scared because he never seen Glenn Dunn's gloves come off. Right. But I don't want Vince Dunn in the penalty box. You're right. I, you know, so who's a guy that can assume that role 
and, and, and has some skill to go with it where maybe he doesn't fight, but he gets in the face of somebody that says, I'm willing to if you do this again. Sammy Blay is going to be one of those. The problem with Sammy Blay is he's got to stay he's healthy. He's got to stay healthy. Yeah, yeah. I if agree. he can stay healthy, Claves, he is a legit winger on the third line with a Tyler Bozak and Zach Sanford and Jordan Cairo. Whatever that line looks like, Blay can be an everyday player if he stays healthy. But he's he reminds me a lot of what Steve Ott used to be. Like he just gets into the face of players. I don't know if he's as mouthy as Steve Ott is. Oh, yeah, Probably. nobody's as mouthy as Ott. That's okay? true. It's very so true. That's- so he's in a category of his own. Actually. That's true. Well, as he, if he's trying to get to that level, because, hey, you got him as an assistant coach, right? He's got to be That's able to true. teach you some of that. Whisper some lines in his ear and what he should do. Some, some, some chirp lessons once you get on yeah. the ice. But Sammy Blaze, one of those guys. I'll give you two of them, Klaibs, too, that I think can contribute uh, from the minors if they get a shot. Um, uh, Mackenzie McEachern is going to be one of them. We, we've seen that a little bit, but I think if he can get an established fourth-line role – He's a guy who knows how to play Craig Berube style hockey. Good skater. Can he be effective on the offensive side? That's the question because if you're going to play, you got to stay up to par with Sunquist and Barbashev. Yeah. And the other one's Austin Pagansky. Now, from everything I've heard about this guy, we saw him a little bit last season when the injuries kind of took up. But from what I've heard, this is the prototypical fourth line grinder style of player that Craig Berube would love. And Craig Berube coached him a little bit when he was coaching the Chicago Wolves. So I think he's further down the depth chart. But don't be surprised if Pagansky gets a call on that taxi squad. He'll be one of those guys that answers the bell when he needs to. So let's talk about the way the roster sets up with regard to taxi squad and just the other elements that are going to be different than what we've seen in the past. Right. Yeah, I think so. So you can hold 21 guys on your roster, which is a normal hockey team. And if you look at it, you're going to have 13 forwards, six defensemen, 12 forwards, seven defensemen, however you want to put it, and you'll have two goaltenders. Now, the interesting part with the new protocols are they got to carry a third goaltender with them at all times. So John Gillies, I think that's John Gillies who they signed. He played for the Islanders last year. Nothing special, maybe 10, 15 games. But he's he's an emergency goaltender. That's what John Gillies is. And if it gets to that point, I wouldn't be surprised to see Doug Armstrong say, okay, we got to go get ourselves a goaltender that's on the free agent market, like a Jimmy Howard or something like that. Are you so, surprised that he's still out there? Not really. When you look at the depth around the National Hockey League of goaltending, um, I think Jimmy uh, – frankly, I – my choices, and I am really excited to see what Ville Huso looks like, but my choices this offseason, Claves, I wanted Henrik Lundqvist in St. Louis because I thought that would have been perfect, and then, of course, his heart condition came about. Um, but Jimmy Howard was my second one because Jimmy Howard was superb in those years with the Detroit Red Wings. And, and a great junior career to go along with it. Right. He I mean, just he, he suffered from having a poor team in front of him for so many years. Yeah. And I think that's why you see teams not willing to take a shot at Jimmy Howard because he's 35 years old. Wow. He he hasn't performed at the level that he's performed at in the past. But in my eyes, I would take a Jimmy Howard over a Corey Schneider who got a job with the Florida Panthers, I believe. Uh, Craig Anderson got a shot with the Washington Capitals in a tryout. I would take a Jimmy Howard over those. So I'm a little surprised he's still out there, but if you look at the depth on the goaltending market in terms of who's available and what teams look like, Jimmy Howard would have to accept a a third string goaltender, which is why I think he's sitting on that market to see if an injury pops up to where they call him and say, "Hey, we need a second goaltender." Hmm. Interesting. So, um, what other observations did you see in day one that we need to? I don't know if it's if it's too early to set a scene for how things unfold, but when you have yeah. only nine more practice days, no exhibition games, right? Uh, everything comes into play. And by the way, what what's your what's your feeling about how practices is going to be? Because one of the things Craig Berube told me not long ago is he nobody was in shape in the latter part of the year, so it was incumbent upon these players. They had four months off to get themselves in shape because I don't think, Alex, you can get in shape in a 10 day training camp where you're on the ice for maybe an hour and 20 minutes. If that. Right. Well, and I think that's that's a lot of 
you know, Joe Vitale has told me so many times because I asked the question of, you know, how are these guys going to be ready with no treat preseason like they usually have? And Joey said, if you think these guys aren't already in game shape, you're sadly mistaken. He said these guys have been skating since they got booted from the bu the bubble in August because they've had such a, a wonky schedule. Um, so the way that this training camp is set up, it looks like Tuesday is going to be another basically dual group camp like they had earlier today. Wednesday, they're going to have a scrimmage at Enterprise Center, which unfortunately is closed to the public, but they're basically going to enact a preseason game between each other. And then Thursday is an off day because, of course, Craig Berube, you don't want to throw these guys into the fire immediately. You might want to make sure that they're staying you know, at the right pace. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I would imagine, are going to be conditioning and just going through kind of the motions of what that NHL roster looks like. Because, look, Claves, you open up the season Wednesday, which means you're probably going to travel Monday to get there and get situated. And you're there for the Wednesday game and then the Friday game against Colorado. So yeah, let's, let's take into account the altitude. Yeah, and which always affects guys. And if you don't yeah. think it does it in hockey, you're sadly mistaken. They say it all the time that you see kind of what they're doing on the ice. And, yes, it's a closed-in building, but it's getting acclimated to that altitude before you even get to the building is what affects you when you hit the ice. All right, tomorrow, what are you looking for again? So I'm looking for a couple things, Klaibs. Let me tell you, the one thing that really surprised me, I liked the way Jordan Cairo looked today. He was fast, man. And from everything I was talking with people and looking at, Jordan Cairo showed the speed. And again, you can't look at these lines from what they're doing on day one of training camp, but the way that they presented it, Jordan Cairo was with Sanford and Bozak. And if that's the case... That's Craig Berube telling Jordan Cairo, this is your shot to be in the NHL. Because if you don't perform in training camp, Sammy Blay, Mackenzie McEachern, Jacob De La Rose, they're going to take the job from you. So I think cairo has got a little bit of a extra step in his skates. So don't be surprised if Jordan Cairo really impresses for the rest of this training camp. So that's going to be something I'm paying close attention to. All right. So here's a guy we haven't mentioned. He's already in shape because he's playing in Russia. What about Clem Costin? What are you hearing about his arrival? This one's interesting, Claves, because uh, Craig Berube, who talked with Jeremy Rutherford, uh, who does great work on The Athletic, talked about how there were some visa issues with Costin. So he's not going to be at training camp at all. And from their understanding, they hope he's going to be here for the start of the AHL season on February 5th. But they're not 100% on that. So Clem Costin is kind of the uncertainty of, do you want to keep him playing in the KHL top line minutes where, frankly, if you look at his numbers, Claves, he hasn't performed at the KHL. I think he's got like one goal and two assists in like 15 games. Do you want to keep him there, let him keep playing, bring him to training camp and let him skate with guys and probably not make the team, and then do nothing until February 5th once the AHL season starts? So. From my understanding, it looks like Clem Costin is going to be KHL until the AHL is positioned to start. Then he'll come over, do his COVID quarantining, and probably play the rest of the AHL season. All right. Blues aren't in San Antonio this year. Where is the minor league affiliate going to be? Springfield, Massachusetts, Claves. Which oh, boy. Is, that's uh, right yeah, down the road. Yeah, That's just a simple bus ride to St. Louis when you need them. Oh, by the way, that's on the East Coast, and the Blues are playing on the West Coast. So that'll be really simple to figure out, right? You know, here's something that I'm amazed that these teams haven't figured out. Why don't you have your minor league affiliate within your time zone? Yep. Uh, you know, certainly there are enough cities within the central time zone where the Blues could have an affiliate. Yeah. Uh, you know, to be in Springfield, Massachusetts does them no good whatsoever because it's going to take at least a day to get somebody here because there are very few direct flights. And what if you're on the road? I mean, it just it doesn't make sense. And this is something that the league should mandate that you should have a minor league affiliate. Now, you may have players in a couple of different affiliates. I don't know. But you should have a minor league affiliate within a four-hour car ride or a five-hour yep. car ride or a or two-hour flight from your home city. Uh, yep. To have a guy that far away doesn't do you any good. Now, I know the Blues got in late after San Antonio was scooped up by Vegas. But surely, and I don't know if they ever want to go back to Peoria. I don't know if Peoria would want them, but that would have been the ideal place for them to be. Yeah, well, and I'm really surprised, and I wouldn't be surprised if more teams start to do what Vegas is doing. Money. 
It does. I, I mean, you're not having to worry about paying another organization and then paying an entire season costs and things like that, where if you're the Vegas Golden Knights, you can sell your minor league team just like you're selling your NHL team. And I, I know you got to find the right city that's starving for that sport, right? Like the Arizona Coyotes aren't going to have success finding a, I don't know, Phoenix, some type of AHL affiliate to sell to their, 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 yeah, their fans. I mean, the Tucson Tiger Cats probably aren't going to be available to them out in Arizona. Yeah, you're, I, you're right. I would imagine not. So, I mean, like that, it, I wouldn't be surprised moving forward. Now that you got Seattle as an expansion team, more teams start to look at it that way. I will say this, Klaibs, though. You and I have had a lot of these conversations about the minor leagues with NHL teams and why the Blues have struggled for so long because, what, they were with Chicago. They were with San Antonio. For so long, they never owned their own team. Now, not meaning the organization, but they never were in charge of an AHL team to have it run their way. They right. did it the last couple of years with San Antonio, which, of course, led to Craig Berube being a part of the NHL team. I'm at least looking forward to the fact that the Springfield Thunderbirds are the Blues run AHL affiliate. Now, how long? Hopefully it's longer than what San Antonio was, but at least you can develop some of these younger guys the way you want to, because let's be honest, you don't have a lot of depth in your minor league system right now. You need to start replenishing if you want to make sure you don't start doing what the Blackhawks are doing. The, who's there going to be their coach in Springfield? Boy, that's a great question. I don't know. I really don't know. I, I know that – there's well, some... sure. Be at practice tomorrow, and I guarantee you he'll be there because he's yeah. going to take half those guys with him. You think he's going to move them around a little bit? Yeah, they'll they'll get a look at him. And that's what you want training camp for, not just for the big club, but for your minor league coaches to see what they have and and be able to build on what they saw to encourage yeah. them to be better to get to the National Hockey League. So yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah, All right, wanna... my friend. Yeah, uh, you quit. No, I was just saying you want to have a whole co you want to have a whole coaching staff, which I would imagine come February they're going to have that ready to go. Definitely. All right, man, this has been good. Uh, we'll, we'll do this again soon. I love me some hockey talk with you, buddy. It, I'm telling you, this does feel like wedding day, baby day, Christmas, Thanksgiving, birthday, all rolled into one, man. You almost said honeymoon night, but that's no, a different subject no, for a yeah. different day. It doesn't feel that good. I can promise you it doesn't feel that good. <laughs> no, I'm looking forward to it, Claves. Uh, we'll be back uh, every week. We get this rolling. And then, of course, hockey season starts up next Wednesday. So we will have plenty of coverage here on Claves Online. Of course, Mike Claiborne will be joining me. I'm Alex Ferrario. Thank you all for joining us on the Ferrario Faceoff. We'll talk to you next time here at Claves Online.